April 26th, Charles Swindoll. Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. Chuck is a former U.S. Marine, an evangelical Christian pastor, an author, and an educator. He has pastored from the East Coast to the West Coast and has written more than 70 books. Chuck founded Insight for Living and a radio program with that same name, which airs on more than 2,000 stations and in 15 languages. In 1994, he became the president of Dallas Theological Seminary. None of Chuck's accomplishments could be called easy. He once said, We are all faced with a series of great opportunities brilliantly disguised as impossible situations. In today's story, we get to see Chuck in action, facing off with a great opportunity. Tough conditions can overwhelm a man, or they can break his stubborn will and point him to his purpose. Chuck Swindoll had survived Marine Corps boot camp. He had just finished his advanced infantry training and he got his first orders. His orders assigned him to be stationed in San Francisco. Not bad for a young, newly married man. Who could complain about going to beautiful California? Not Chuck. Chuck and his wife moved to California and were happily settled in their new home for several months when unexpected orders arrived. His new assignment was Okinawa, Japan. It was like being punched in the gut. Chuck considered it, in his own words, to be the most God-awful letter. He would now be separated from his new wife. He would be separated from his new home. He would be separated from the peace of mind he had counted on. His new assignment was to be a 16-month-long separation. The first thing he did was make sure the orders were addressed to him. After the reality set in, then he and his wife cried. Chuck's trip was 17 days on a troop ship to Japan and then on to Okinawa. Along the way, Chuck struggled to accept this path God had chosen. But Chuck had plenty of time to read a book his brother had given him, a book about missionaries who had died in the line of duty the book helped. For the first time since he had been ordered to Japan, Chuck stopped resisting. By the time he arrived, he thought there might be a plan in this. In Okinawa, Chuck lived in a hut with 47 other Marines. These courageous and selfless men had endured super demanding training that was designed to prepare them to do what was necessary to protect the free world. They were putting their lives on the line. They were now a band of brothers. But like ugly weather, the general atmosphere of crude talk, loose sex, cynicism, and ridicule bombarded him. To know what it was like, Chuck said, just think of a pack of hungry junkyard dogs that have been teased until they're snarling and foaming at the mouth. Add an endless stream of profanity Subtract all moral restraint, multiply by tropical heat and humidity, divided by 365 days a year. He was ready to serve with these guys, but it was tough. He had not yet realized that God had called him to Okinawa to serve these men. Even so, God did not abandon Chuck or his bunkmates. It was late on a Sunday evening, Chuck said, I was on one of those rickety old oriental buses as it weaved and bobbed its way back to the base. Everyone else around me was in a drunken stupor or snoring. Sitting in the back of the bus, Chuck used a flashlight as he thumbed through his Bible, and he struck oil. The oil of the Spirit in chapter 3 of the letter to believers in the church at Philippi. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. I thought, that's it. That is everything in one grand statement. I want to know him, Chuck said. 
If Chuck were to experience God's life-giving power, why shouldn't he experience his suffering as well? God made it clear that suffering was the whole package deal. Shooting, missing his wife, crawling through bug-infested tunnels, crude language, bombs, and guys who talk trash. God's life-giving power was a whole package deal. God was ready to help with any part of the suffering. Chuck just had to ask. Chuck's heart softened toward Okinawa and especially toward his fellow Marines. He felt compassion for them. He got to know them. He befriended them. They were men created in the image of God. They were Marines. They were heroes. And they were all in this mess together. In Isaiah 66, 9, God's word tells us, In the same way I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born, says the Lord. Are you struggling to accept the path God has chosen for you? Do you have a streak of stubbornness that needs to be surrendered for God to use you? Are you willing to pray and ask God to remove anything in your life that is preventing you from serving Him on the path He has chosen for you at this moment? Tough conditions can overwhelm a man, or they can break his stubborn will and point him to his purpose. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real-life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.